they can learn very much of an app because they have to get people using this support. So, okay. okay, so what about, uh, so this is the audit I want to consider in, in this talk, which is uh, the approximate majority, it uh, comes from sensor network, you may, you may know it. Uh, it's, uh, it's a population algorithm, which means that you have a population of uh, entities, which could be sensors, or in this case, they are, they are proteins, molecules. And they are in one of two states, like red or green. Uh, and so 50% of the population is green, 70% is red, let's say. And they have to agree who, who, who is in majority. And at the end of the algorithm, you want the whole population to be either red or green. Uh, and it's a stochastic algorithm that you pick two pairs at, at random. And that, that pair can communicate by radio or by molecular collision. They have some exchange of information. And that's how they can, they can agree, but they can only communicate locally. They can, can talk to everybody, but only locally at the time. So to solve this, this uh, problem, uh, you introduce a third state, which is undecided. And this is the, the algorithm that expresses the chemical reaction system. Now, the original algorithm is, is a discrete time stochastic algorithm. Uh, you can extend that and also all the results to continuous time. So you have now interactions in continuous time. And that means you can write the same algorithm as a, as a set of reactions, which are kinetic reactions, continuous time, still stochastic. So you can imagine there's a finite number of molecules that bump into each other. Uh, so in, the, in, this, uh, in this notation, I, write, I can explain the argument. It says that when, uh, when red uh, meets green, uh, either one way or the other, uh, then one of the two will become undecided because it does not know uh, who's in majority because it's just one red and one green. They do not know who's in majority. So once I said, well, I don't know, so I'm going to become undecided. But then when undecided means green, says, oh, he's not undecided, so he must know who's in majority. And so it becomes green, and he means red, it becomes red. So that's the that's whole algorithm. And this has a very good properties. It's a it's logarithmic algorithm in, in, in parallel time. And definitely you get uh, n, n log n collisions of communication to, to convergence, but in parallel time it's logarithmic. It's a robust perturbation, so if you if you are in the in the all red state, it's very difficult to push you down back to the all green state. There's a threshold that you can set. Uh, and if you run a simulation of this algorithm, it will, in the worst case scenario, you start with uh, the same quantity of, of red, green, and red. You will see that green and red start talking to each other, of course, because they're all green and red, and they, they become blue. And so they all drop to one third, one third, one third very quickly. And then they stay there, apparently thinking for a while, which should be in majority. And then kind of randomly, one of one gate creates advantage, and then there is a exponential ramp up. In this case, red wins uh, exponential. The exponential ramp up explains the exponential logarithmic uh, runtime. And then when you're up here, you're, you're finished. You know, the whole system is, is stable in that state or on the opposite state. OK, this happens to be also found in biology directly. This, this feature from biology paper is exactly that feature, but I, I will not. This track is in detail. Um, so this is uh, so these are the reaction. This is the network you can you know the same reaction you can write as that network. This means uh, 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 catalysis, which means that if it would be x2, is this thing that uh, uh, that converts x1 to x2 without without itself being effect affected. So catalysis means it's the middle the middle species here, the catalytic species does not change, but they change the species on the edges. That's the catalysis. OK, so that's uh, uh, the algorithm. Now I want to explain exactly what I meant by this notion of activation and inhibition. And uh, this is called an influence network. There are influences that they activate or inhibit other, other nodes. Um, and uh, uh, I'm going to take this interpretation that each influence net node is being represented by three uh, chemical species, x0, x1, and x2. And the idea is simply that x0 is the state in which this x here is activated, or, or high, and x2 is the species uh, such that this x is uh, uh, inhibited or low, and the middle species is just uh, in between to ensure nonlinearity of the transition. So if you want to activate x, you should push towards the x0 state, so this is what, what it does, it's pushing towards the x0 state. If you want to inhibit x, you want to push towards the x2 state. And now this is the interpretation of that. And to this, you can give a precise kinetic, just in terms of chemical reactions and the kinetics. And so now it's this uh, completely specific interpretation of that uh, notion of activation and addition. And it turns out to be a huge function coefficient, too, if you know what that happens, what that, what that means. But now, notice that this uh, uh, kernel here is the same we had there in the process majority algorithm. So in fact, now I can write that algorithm exactly in this style, with a single variable and this uh, 
two loops. So from now on, you will see this as the proxy majority algorithm. So again, the dash, the dash line means that you're on the side of the, of the, on the low side, and the solid dimer means you're on the high side. Now, in previous work, what we did was to connect this algorithm to an actual biological system, which was the cell cycle switch, or at least try to. So we did a lot of simulations and comparisons, and this is a, this is a bad switch. This is a control, the control system, the switch which is not with n squared time uh, because it's a random walk essentially. So it's a bad switch. But we found, what we found out is the approximate majority and the cell cycle basically have the same performance. And you can see these uh, stochastic simulations with the black lines. You see the same exponential ramp up uh, uh, that you see in the approximate majority. So we could uh, we could say in a kind of sensible or trivial way that uh, the uh, although this is a kind of mysterious network, it's trying to achieve the same effect and M performance of that network. And it, it, it tried to, to show that the uh, functionality. But also we could see that there was something wrong with it. There is a bug in this network here because it doesn't go all the way to the top. Uh, and also it turns out to take twice as long. This time scale is twice as long as that. So it's not it's not in kind of optimal in the same sense. Now the reason why it, uh, there is a bug here is it's easy to see because there is a X is always pushing on Z, which is always pushing on X. So X is always somewhat depressed, and so it can never go up, up to the top. So if you were an engineer, you would say, well, that's easy to fix. All I need to do is to put the feedback from X to X, so that when X is trying to become high, it's needed X, so, it, no, so X can no longer be X, and so X can go all, all the way to the top. And, and uh, so this is kind of engineering fix, and uh, if you can do it this way, you can put, uh, uh, well, first of all, I should say, S and T happen to be the same molecule in, in reality, so you can, you can collapse into a single molecule S that goes to the same two places. Now you put the feedback from X in S, and so that X can go at the top. And then looking at this network, you could see two things. First of all, as expected, it goes all the way to the top. Good. But also, if we did not expect, it also becomes twice as fast. And this is still kind of a mystery to me. But it so happened that it, now this exactly reduced the performance of the approximate majority algorithm in a different style. Um, so we published this paper, and, and kind of accidentally, the same week, there was another experimental paper uh, explaining that this feedback here is actually necessary for the proper function of the real cell cycle switch, and apparently had not noticed that before. So we got kind of experimental confirmation the same week we published it. <laughs> kind of unusual. Um, good. So this is the previous work. Now I want to understand uh, this phenomenon. Why? How can this switch? How can this network reproduce so, so precisely the performance of the majority? What's what's going on here? There seems to be something possibly a little bit deeper. Um, and in fact, I can be, I, I can show now, and I'll try to explain to you. That I can show that the, this GW network, the one shown here, for GW, uh, uh, and also the most complicated one you saw at the beginning with lots of uh, links, uh, actually can exactly and always uh, be as good as approximate majority. What exactly means numerically, just not the same complexity class, but numerically the same, and also always meaning not just for the parameters that are chosen here, but for any set of parameters, you can replicate the same performance. Yeah. So that would be more or less the conclusion. So let's see how we get there. So first of all, I started by noticing this puzzling phenomenon. Um, and this is comparing the mutual inhibition to approximate majority. So if I take approximate majority, remember it has three, three species, so it has three variables that you can change. Um, and if you run this as a, now as a, as a continuous deterministic system, uh, you set some initial parameters, which are you know, x, uh, well, x0 equals 2 and x2 uh, equals 1, and you run it. Then it will converge to the majority, uh, and you will get three traces, one for x0, x1, and x2. Okay. Now this one, now this one has six species, has three y and three z, mm -hmm. and I can choose parameters for this system such that I get exactly the same uh, plot. Uh, what happens here, there are now six variables, so the in pairs they overlap. There are two traces, the two overlapping traces here, to here, to there. But all of them exactly reproduce one trace of that system. Uh, and it turns out that I can do that, uh, if I change the parameters here, I can change the parameters there, so that again happens. So this is kind of magical. I think that there should be some you know, deeper explanation apart from fiddling with the parameters in a kind of random way. So this is just a, an observation. Uh, but uh, I will use that to explain how the mapping works in this case. So 
the idea is that we're going to, to make this to make this happen, you have to find a mapping of this network <coughs> to that network. And we have to map the, 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 the species, in this case there are one choice map y and z to x. And also we have to map the reactions, which is a little bit uh, non obvious. So the way uh, this happen, the way you should do this to make this uh, coincidence happen, you should map uh, the z variable to the x variable and to map the y variables the other way to the x variable, so y2 to x0, and y1 to x1, and y2 to x2. Well, because these are essentially in, in competition with each other, so they cannot be all the same x, and the, the way to resolve that is to split y into x. And then you have to map the reactions, and you see the city just map by homomorphism, so if the reaction goes to, if a, if a species goes to another species, a reaction that species will go to a reaction that comes to that species. So the red, so the red reactions here are mapped to the red reactions and the green reactions to the green reactions. And if you do that, uh, if you have this mapping, then for any choice of initial conditions and also any choice of rates of these reactions, you can find initial conditions and rates such that the the, uh, the kinetics, the traces are, 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 are identical up to overlapping. Okay. So this is just an observation. But this, you can, this happens in, in many cases, so even if I take the, the most complicated switch that I had at the beginning, uh, here too I can set random, in this case I'm taking really true random initial conditions and rates of y and z, they're all different, so you get six uh, random traces. And from those uh, uh, initial, from those parameters and from the mapping that I can find uh, from here to there, I can fix the parameters here, so again I get exactly the same thing. Uh, and again, this was done by you know, trial and error. The question is, what does it work so well? So, uh, so the question is uh, now becomes, so when can a network emulate another one? So, uh, when can you find a mapping from one network to another such that their kinetics becomes identical? And that's the question I want to answer. And somehow you need to preserve the structure of the network, but also need to preserve the the, uh, the stoichiometry, the the, the 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 numerical aspects of the network in some way. So now I go to a little uh, little bit of math. Uh, so what is a chemical reaction network? It's a set of species, uh, finite, a set of, uh, set of reactions, also finite. And for example, you have species A, B, C, and a reaction R, which is one reaction in this case. And a reaction R is written in this style, 2A plus B equals uh, right trait K to A plus 3C, and so you can kind of draw it kind of like that. Um, but an important the concept is the notion of a stoichiometry of a reaction. So first of all, uh, these numbers are called stoichiometric coefficients. And in reaction, you typically write rho r of k pi, where rho maps uh, each species to a stoichiometric number. So in this case, uh, rho a is 2, that's the number of a in that reaction. Rho b is 1, and rho c is 0 because there's no 0 on the left hand side. And pi is the right hand side, so pi, pi a is 1, so there's 1 there. Pi b is 0, there's no b, and pi c is 3. So those are the stoichiometric numbers included by these rho and pi uh, maps. And then a, a stoichiometry of a, of a species in a reaction is the net uh, usage of that species. So in this case, we, in this reaction, we, we use up two A's and we gain back one A. So overall, we lose one A. And so that minus one is called the net stoichiometry of the species in the reaction. And I will mostly use this other uh, definition, which is the uh, instantaneous stoichiometry, which is the net stoichiometry multiplied by the rate constant. So in this case, it's minus one times K. And so we will see this phi a lot. Uh, so the way to formalize all that is to define a morphism between a chemical reaction network, and that's uh, in general just two maps, it's a, a map of a species and a map of a reaction, and they, they could do whatever they want in general. But in particular, you want to look at specific, uh, specific uh, maps. And so there are three key morphisms. Uh, the first one is always just homomorphism. Uh, so you map, uh, you map, that means that when you map a reaction, you must obey the species mapping on both sides, and you also must preserve the, the now this is a graph theoretical notion of homomorphism, but since the uh, the graph connectivity has to do with stoichiometry, with how many um, um, those numbers are the in and out degrees of the of the of the, of the edges, so the stoichiometry uh, uh, this this condition you can translate to stoichiometric conditions, which is this one here. So this implies that this is the stoichiometric matrix of SR, which means that which piece and which reaction will tell you the stoichiometry the instantaneous stoichiometry of that piece that reacts with the matrix piece of variation. Uh, the same for C half is the stoichiometric matrix of that. And MS is uh, simply the, the characteristic matrix of the species map. So the species map will map species of S to S half, and MS of S to S half is one if uh, 
a mass of S is S half other one is zero, just like the characteristic function. Okay? Uh, T is a transpose dot in matrix multiplication, and so it, it's an easy computation that this uh, graph theoretical notion implies this matrix uh, equality. Maybe more or less mysterious, but it's just a consequence. So the second notion that we need is a reactor morphism, which is just one half of the of the homomorphism. The reactor morphism preserve the uh, preserve the, the, the source of the of the reactions. It doesn't care about the target of the rate, so it's just uh, less restricted in the homomorphism. The reason you have to preserve the source is because the low mass action chemistry talks about uh, the left hand side of reactions, and that's why it's quite important. But again, it's a graph theoretical notion, and again, you can get the consequence in the uh, in algebra, uh, matrix algebra. In this case, rho is stoichiometric matrix, means which species in which reaction tells you the stoichiometric number of that species in that reaction. Like and, uh, but the notion we, which is really key is this one here, which is called stoichiometric and this satisfies this property. And this is uh, a priori completely mysterious. Okay, I'll try to explain it. But again, it's a matrix property involved in the stoichiometric matrices and involves the, the, the species map and the reaction map. So what does that mean? Well, we can expand. You can actually, you know, I can expand that multiplication and see, and see what you get. So if you expand that, you get this, which is not, not much better. Uh, but uh, what this means is that uh, basically it tells you that there has to be some correspondence of the spectrometer of the network for things to work out. And in particular, it tells you that uh, if you take uh, uh, for any S in this, uh, in this network and for every reaction in that network, some sum of spectrometers in this network must be equal to a, a, a spectrometer over, over the mapping of the species in the, in the reaction of the other network. So some correlation, yeah, it's hard to understand how to read that, but some correlation of the two uh, stoichiometries is connected. Well, this can be, uh, however, the important point is that this can be computed statically. So this only depends on the structure of the network and on the, on the in and out degrees of the, of the edges and, and on the weights, on the, on the rates on the R. But it's completely static information. So can, uh, given the network and give the table, and these are computed by hand, I put all the species on, on this column here, so they all these are the species of this network. Here I put the mapping uh, of the species, so uh, no, uh, Z0 was going to X0, but Y0 was going to X2, so it is mapping the species. Uh, here I put all the reactions of uh, this small network, and here I put all the reactions and map to those reactions, according to the mapping of reactions, so M0 and M4 map to M0. And then for each cell, we have to compute this equality. In this case, it means that uh, the sum of the stoichiometry of Y0 in, in, in those two reactions must be equal to the stoichiometry of that. Uh, species in that reaction. And if all those numbers turn out to be equal, then it's a soccer model. That's the definition. Now, the second piece I have to explain is the, uh, the, the kinetics, the continuous kinetics of chemical reaction in the network with a couple of slides. Uh, so, first of all, the state of a network is an assignment of concentration to each species. So we're not talking about continuous uh, state. So, each species has a concentration, and V maps species to a concentration. Uh, the differential system of, uh, of a chemical reaction network is a map of this type, uh, where this is a state, and this is a map from state to real numbers. Now, this is defined by the law of mass action. We are not going to try to explain. All you need to know is that uh, this uh, the differential system, for each state, for each state of the system, and for each species, it tells you what is the derivative of the concentration of that species at that at that time in that state. So it gives you the derivative of the concentration given in that state. And so that's what you know that f of dx is the slope of that bunch of that curve where x is the, the trajectory of the species that. Okay. And then it's the low mass action and, and that's what it makes it. Um, now the notion of relation, which I was trying to explain this, this uh, trajectory that's overlapping exactly, uh, can be defined by this uh, equation here. That again relates the differential system of the two network F and F half. And what this says is that uh, the derivative of a species on this side must essentially be equal to the derivative on the other side. And if the derivatives are equal in corresponding states, and if you start from equal or corresponding states, then the trajectory has to match forever because we have determinism in the computing in all these. So if, if the trajectory are uh, if suddenly the same, same initial conditions and exactly the same derivative, they will follow the same trajectory forever. So this condition here on, on derivative is sufficient to imply that the trajectory will match forever. forever. So you only need to uh, ensure that. 
Okay, so given that uh, the theorem is the discontinuity uh, generation theorem that says that if a, if a mapping from between two reaction methods, SR and SR, SR half, if it's one has to be reaction morphism, it has to preserve the left hand side of the reaction, and two is a stoichiometry, it's this correlation between the stoichiometries, and these are both static conditions on the structure of the network, then if it satisfies these properties, which implies that uh, the trajectories will match. Uh, you, know, you know, possibly for all, for all, very much for all possible initial states, because there is a, there is a quantification here for all, for all the uh, So this is uh, this is what ensures this uh, correspondence, given just a certain information about the network. So this again tells you that if I change, uh, if I take any any parameters, any initial conditions in AM, I can choose initial condition of MI, which happens to be this way copy under the uh, MS mapping of the initial condition of, of I am, and then this trajectory will be identical. Uh, the second theorem says that I can also change the rate, and that's done in the following way. If, uh, if, I, have a, if I have to have a certain morphism between uh, these two reaction networks, and I decide to change the rate of this, of this other network, which means I just change uh, some R prime, so nothing changes about the rate, then I can, I can always uh, correspondingly change the rate of this the left hand side network in such a way that the composition of those three changes is again a certain uh, And then I can use the previous theorem to, to ensure that the information of the network is used. So, so this means that if I change rates in one network, I can change rates in the other network correspondingly, and, and, I, and again get an image. Okay, so uh, how does that help? Well, um, uh, it happens that you can actually find lots of these mappings. Uh, so these are all verified uh, by checking, not the kinetics, but by checking these conditions on the structure of the network. So you, you check that it's reaction. In fact, these are all homomorphic, sorry, particularly these are, all of these are homomorphic, not, not tricks. And then you also have to check the stoichiometric condition by a little computation. But all of these are, are, are uh, satisfied with the conditions. So th these are all simulations. So this means that uh, uh, this, this thing here can behave exactly like the Cossian majority if it wants to. Uh, if you choose the parameters correctly. And what are these things? Well, these are about the network which has some relevance. This is mutual inhibition that the other one we saw, the kind of uh, place in biology. Uh, this one is the cell cycle, the most complicated cell cycle. This is the, the double network I was studying earlier that uh, it was you know, the correct version of the, of the cell cycle. This is actually the original cell cycle switch from our last year. And they all basically flow into a proxy majority of two for innovation mapping. So in a sense, they're all implementing, uh, so this tells us the all, they all have two stable states, because since they have the same, they have the same trajectory, this has stable state trajectory, so all of those have at least two stable states, which is one trigger because you have to, you know, ensure that this will be more complicated. Uh, and secondly, they actually actually the performance is the same, the trajectory is the same, and so they actually run in, in logarithmic time, all of them. Uh, for, you know, for appropriate parameters. Uh, so now, emulation has nice properties. First of all, it's, uh, it's compositional. So if you if you uh, uh, have an emulation from here to there, and an emulation from there to there, then you have one from here to there. So this means that uh, uh, any any um, uh, so here you have three trajectories. Here you have six, and this six trajectory can replicate these three. Here you have eighteen, and here you have six. It means these eighteen trajectories can emulate those six. And by composition, these 18 projectors can always emulate any three projectors for that. It also composes in, uh, in, in context. So we have taken two approximate majority networks and built an oscillator by wiring them in a special way. And so this, this is a nice linear cycle oscillator. And then I've replaced AM with MI, since we have an emulation from AM to MI. So I'm able to replace AM with MI in this uh, very demanding context. And I can wire the mind in such a way that uh, exactly emulates uh, AM, so the oscillator is exactly reproduced. So this gives you a substitutivity of this uh, of this network uh, uh, networks in one and the other. And this is based on, on the fact that this can emulate that. Uh, so the way the, the way you have to wire that is to wire this according to to the mapping by which you network or can emulation from here to there. So you have to now, uh, so this one was the uh, the approximate majority zoo. All these things were the approximate majority. You know, there are other zoos. For example, you can start from a, from a simple uh, negative feedback loop, and then you can make it more complicated and more complicated, and you're going to and still going to have a certain morphism from here to there. 
uh, and so you are going to be able to replicate it in exactly uh, this way. The, the interest of this is that uh, this may be the actual network you find in biology. You find some massive forgetting, you know what it does. But in fact, maybe what it does is simply does that in mean, just a complicated way. And the reason you may have to be so complicated is for robustness, because now you go and, and, and delete one edge out of, those, of that network, it you know, changes a little bit, but mostly remains the same kinetic. While if you delete an edge from that network, you kill it pretty easily. So one reason may be that this is just more complicated for robustness, but the certain morphism explains to you uh, uh, what it does actually and why and how it does it. So, uh, so let me start concluding. Uh, so what are the interpretations? So this is a, again is the notion of a, a relationship between network which is static. You can compute the structure of the network, which has implication about the kinetics. And it has uh, several interpretations. One is that it can explain the structure of the network. Now, if you look at this complicated type of switch, you can say, ah, maybe in this condition it's only doing approximate and nothing else. So it explains the structure of the network quite why, 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 why that way. Another, another interpretation is that it says something about the vastness or infinite function, which is an example I just gave. The interpretation I like is this one here, though, is a, a, not, a neutral path in evolution. So we can imagine this to be evolution backwards. So imagine initially there was a simple network, and then it became more complicated, more complicated, more complicated, and then you end up with the actual network that we have today. Uh, but to, to make that work, you have to ensure that as you mutate the network, it does not radically change function, because then it will be selected again immediately. But if, it, if the mapping is an emulation, then it, it guarantees in the same condition that you had before, you get exactly the same way, so it will not be selected. But it will, it will increase complexity. And so you can increase complexity without penalty until uh, at some point uh, 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 you get here, and then at this point you may decide to specialize to, you know, to, to different conditions. So you, you, you get more functionality, more functionality. But the, the question is always how to get from a simple network to a complex network, where if you go to a neutral path, then and, uh, and finally, um, uh, so this is a notion of uh, network implementation. So you, you, Probably familiar with abstractions. So in abstraction, you take a complicated system and try to make it simpler. Here is the opposite. You take a simple system and try to make it more complex, but in such a way that the kinetics, the behavior is preserved. And so it's a notion of implementation, what we normally call implementation of a, of a system with a more complicated system. You only have to guarantee that the, your implementation will behave as the original system in the context of the original system. And you don't care what happens outside of that. So it's the same, same option. Okay. Um, so just uh, concluding, uh, conclusion is that in the first part of the talk, I talked about this approximate relationship between these two networks. And now, because of, of the analytics, uh, I can make this exact uh, if I could provide some correction to the original network and the uh, exact correspondence. And, and I can now say that uh, things were that complicated can actually exact and evade something very simple as we can see in the explanation. And in separate work, which has nothing to do with this, but I also worked on DNA computing, we, this is a result of an experiment where we actually built with DNA the approximate majority algorithm. And these are, this is the running and computing majority of two operations. And this was done by DNA strand. So this is a completely unrelated, but, but in a sense, uh, if this is uh, the connection with the proxy majority, uh, I could possibly now claim that here we have implemented a cell cycle switch in you know, indirect way. Okay, that was it.
here at all. You know, there are people are applying very hard, but the approximation which has been defined so far seems to be extremely relevant to the kind of approximation of this thing. So open problem. That it, it would be great if it would be so I couldn't do it that way, so I decided to do it in the continuous framework. So I give it continuous semantic that the topic is much easier. So uh, please but yes, it would be great if you want to do it in a stochastic uh, um, you said that these more fields can be checked statically, and some of them require some numerical calculations, if I understood correctly. Yeah. Is there some degree of uh, error that you allow in that calculation? Because I suppose that the rates involved are not known with infinite precision. No. Yes, they can have a precise, uh, completely precision kind of approach. So even that, uh, <coughs> we don't really know. We don't know that. So all these definitions are exact definitions. If you, but, um, uh, but that's an interesting question for the non-consistent people because then you, you might be able to answer the question: if the trajectory deviates a little bit, uh, will it fall back into the original trajectory? So that's the question you can ask and possibly answer in that framework, which is really difficult to answer in this stochastic framework. Um, well, well, if you've got last question, yes. um, is there any uh, any hope of a converse? I mean, if you've got a system where the rates exactly match some other system, um, are there conditions under which there has to be this uh, stock in all prison? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so actually that's, a, that's almost an even only, so, so this here and here uh, also goes backwards. If, uh, uh, if, so if if the uh, if, there, if the, the reactions in these systems they all have different left hand sides, mm -hmm. then there is a converse theorem of right. So we want to see the matrix. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I'm not sure, but the uh, the condition is that uh, uh, no two reactions should have the same left hand side. Mm -hmm. If that's true, then then there's a converse already. And also, moreover, there is a way to reduce uh, a chemical reaction. Network to one where all the left hand sides are different by using uh, uh, rational coefficients on mm -hmm. the right hand side. So if you do that, then you will have a full uh, if and only. Yeah. But, but the, the success of the rational rational system is a bit better. So. Yeah. Lunch time now. Uh, there's some food, and this is over in the college building, which is uh, three buildings down this way. Turn left and go. It's the main university building, um, and it's.